Hi everybody, Russ and my hammers 11. Hope you're all safe and well. For you to channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon so you may do have any time we put new content on. Before anyone asks, yes, it is a bit pink today, my room, and it's not, but it actually goes with our guest. I didn't even think about she was wearing a gonna wear a breast cancer shirt. Um, <laughs> um obviously, if you're new to channel, please hit the, the bell icon so you may do have any time to put new content on. Obviously, we've got all the food bank stuff coming up every Thursday. We've only got two left. Um, I'm trying to raise £20,000 for the Irons Point Food Banks. Um, but today's guest, Pride of Irons co chair, it's Joe Bailey. Hi, Joe, how are you? Hey, Rush, really well, thank you very much. Yeah, um, cheers for um, fitting me in. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm really good. nervous. It feels really strange. I don't know why. I don't know why. I do this sort of thing all the time and I feel nervous. I don't know why. You have maybe, such cause you, maybe it's because you're on the other side. You know what I mean? Because it's like you, if you're like, uh, it's quite funny when I interview like loads of like all the YouTubers, like, you know, whoever it was, you know, Ryan or whatever, they really enjoy it because they don't have, because it's all on me. It's all on me, and, and you're the one who has to answer. That. Well, it's the other way around usually, and maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's a bit of, you know, you're usually on one side, the other side of the of the screen, so to speak. But um, yeah. But I mean, what's nice is you get a nice, you've got a nice setup. You've got your microphone, you've got your headphones, so we've got a bit of nice audio, which is nice for a change. Yeah. Um, but uh, how are you? How's the? How have you been? Well, you know, like a lot of people, so many ups and downs, you know, everything's unprecedented, you know, I've been on furlough as well, part-time furlough, you know, everybody's got trouble still, you know, but that's why these shows are great, because it's to uplift, you know, and it's, I think yeah. you've just got to get on with things, you just have to get on, I keep busy, that's what I do, yeah. I do things like this, Russ. <laughs> yeah, keep busy, and obviously, yeah. you were at the test game like, on the weekend, how was that, must have been weird. <laughs> It was weird, but wonderful just yeah. to be back to watch a match of football. Yeah, even I'm not going to mention the score though. Let's not go there. <laughs> no, right, so I want to get that down. Was a shame. Again, that was a shame because I was because obviously I was at the ground because obviously we had this. We, we don't want to mention that game either, but we was at the <laughs> other game, and and I was getting the text through because I was, I was really interested because of being a test game, and I was like, oh, poor buggers. Yeah, it, it was tough. I mean, I was still suffering because I did a, a little video as well for the FSA on, on you know, how the COVID measures went there and things like that. Yeah. Um, and my voice, it was too, I got a low voice anyway, as you can hear, but it was two semitones lower because I was shouting so much. And of course, you've got the mask on, so you have to shout even louder. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm still sort of recovering now, to be fair. But just to be back, just to, to, to smell, and it sounds silly, it's the smells, isn't it? Smelling the grass. I totally get you. You know, totally and, and it... You. Brand new ground for us as well, being yeah. obviously at the Daggers, you know, so it was a historic moment and, you know, a great shout out to the stewards and everything. They've done such a good job considering, you know, um, yeah, and uh, I won't mention officials and things like that because they ruin the game. I'm not going to go there. You know, we moan about VAR in the men's games, but some of the officials in the men, uh, women's are an absolute nightmare. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, it was a, it was amazing. Rush, just to be back, just to be of back, course. see the familiar faces and yeah. smell the burgers. And not, <laughs> yeah, no, honest, no, it's so true. It's like that's, it's a weird smell. It's these, it is smells that conjure things up. It's like when I, you know, we talk about the old, the old ground and stuff like that. And, what I can't rep you know, I can't seem to replicate is the the smell of the crap burgers that Ken's cafe or, or the you know is that is you know what I mean like cheap burger smell. I mean you're a horn you're a horn church girl like me. If you walk down the like oh, I suppose you were at Park Lane Park Lane Chippy you know that, sm that cheap burger smell. I used to go Park Lane Chippy. Um, yeah. Because is it, but yeah, that cheap burger smell you can't replicate can you? And no, it's you um and, and 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 the cut grass is yeah it's, it's a smell of cut grass and I, I mean, i've got astroturf now here so i don't get that anymore now but yeah, um yeah. <laughs> it, it, it takes you back doesn't it it really does it really does and you just outed me that i'm horn church with an o and you're horn church with a h yeah you are in the posh part so yeah about that i like the way you sneak that one in there russ nice one but yeah but um but yeah just being back i, I like it i just want everyone to get back to football because it just yeah. it's the first time i felt normal for the mm. very first time, even mm. though it was all obviously social distancing, it really? oh, it was just wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Just wonderful. and it is. It's it's, it's one. I mean, that's why it was really important that that restart happened, wasn't it? Because I think it, it. You know, some people were like, I know, obviously the French league and various other leagues, you know, didn't finish their games, but everyone else did, and I think it it had a sense although it was all a bit weird and behind closed doors and stuff like that you know you had something new to think about you had something new to moan about particularly being a west ham van um and and it 
did a, bring a sense of normality. And I think, you know, as you said, the test games and stuff will bring another step towards an, the normal, whatever the new normal is going to be. But um, yeah. it, it, it was, yeah. It, and I think there's, isn't it some of the EFL games this week, uh, test games as well. So I believe so, um, yeah. I so, so, yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's one thing That's one thing against the, the ground is, one thing good against the ground is it's, you know, London Stadium's, it's really set up for social distancing. You know, <laughs> you know, something's might, something might be critical of that, but actually it is, you know, it's really is good. And, you know, to be fair, the, the the London Stadium guys uh, have done a cracking job in terms of, you know, the protocols and the, all the signage and you know apparently you're know, talking to other journalists, talking to some journalists about it. Other grounds could be a nightmare to get through, <coughs> but not London Stadium. Yeah, you know, literally in in with a minute. You know, it's not like it's, you know, oh god, you know, rigmarole and literally doom, 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 done. You're in. It's like. Per- absolutely perfect but um yeah. it was almost built for it wasn't it it was like mm. preemptive we must have known because it, it 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 really fits this situation so you know the sooner the better i don't see why we can't get a move on with this really obviously yeah. it de- does depend on the grounds they have got to look at the f- individual grounds of course but um yeah especially for our stadium with that yeah i mean uh, the old girl you wouldn't have had a chance <laughs> <coughs> out to park could you imagine how, how no. tight the ground is it it is it just doesn't work out but um yeah. There's only one way in and one way out, really. You could only come in from the station as well. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. You, you have no hope. It's great. No, it's true. It's yeah, so, so true. But, no, but I mean, that's 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 the great thing, you know. And, and I think, you know, it's one of these, I think we'll wait and see what happens. I mean, no one really knows, do they? I mean, you know, it was going to be October and everything sort of went a bit buggered up, which we knew it was going to. Yeah. I don't think I don't personally I don't think to after Christmas, but who knows? I, I don't know. I'm not I'm not I'm not a politician, but I think they'll try and get them back as soon as possible because yeah. it as you said, it brings a sense of normality and it's a bit like the kids going back to school, isn't it? It's like you've you've got to let them go back to school and it's like same as people going back to work and things like that. You've got to do that and uh It's the new normal. We've got to find the new normal. And yeah. if that just means a reduced capacity so be it. Put us all in a ballot. Let's go for it. At least we're back. You know, even if it's just the home fans, you know, I mean, obviously on the test match, the Arsenal fans weren't there, which wasn't a loss, to be fair. But, you know, <laughs> it did feel strange. And we were yeah. like the 12th person on the pitch then as well, because we yeah. were driving them along. So, you know, again, the results, you know, anyway. Yeah, just I mean, it's a huge, you know, even when we get, you said, when we get back in, we're not going to have away fans this season. That's pretty much a given now. So it will be a huge advantage for anyone who has, who has home fans. It doesn't matter if it's a few thousand, it's still going to yeah. make a, a massive difference. Um, and, and we'll see. And uh, yes, we'll see. Obviously roll on Saturday, roll on, uh, roll on Arsenal. Hopefully the men's won't be nine, same result as the women's, but We've got a lot. Who of, knows? I'm not. We're not going to talk about that, though, are there? Yeah, no. we've got so many. Are we going to get a point from anything the next four matches? I don't know. It's, I feel well, for the, Moyes, to be fair. I do. I, I feel for I Moyes do. with everything going on. But I think at the end of the day, you know, West Ham are just the most unpredictable team. <laughs> and so, you know, when you have these run of fixtures, and you're thinking, oh, my God, we were playing, you know, was it six of the top seven or something like that? Yeah. Those are the games you know we've we've got more of a chance. Yeah. It's when you know if we look at this, if you looked at it and we had like West Brom, we had like Burnley, Sheffield United. I'm more worried of getting points of those games because we never do. <laughs> it's true, you know what I mean. It's like you know, yeah, look at, right. yeah. I mean, since re, when we had restart, we we beat we've, we've done a double on Chelsea last season. Um, we should have beaten Man United, Old Trafford. Yeah. Um, actually, it's quite a good thing if we get to play these teams, particularly away from home at the moment, because soon they're going to have fans back in. And if they have back fans back in, that's another, actually the 12th man. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see, we'll wait and see. But, you know, at the moment, I, at the moment I get quite, I get a nice car park space. So, you know, there you go. I, 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 I never had one before in my life. So it's very, it's very different, but there we go. So, um, <laughs> he, first question, he says, um, 10 minutes into the interview, that's not too bad for me, oh. is, um, <laughs> is, is, is Joe, why is, why is West Ham your club? We can see you've got, I mean, I love the pink top. I never got, I was trying to get my daughter one, but they, I always run out. It's really frustrating because she'd love that. Um, but why is West Ham your club? What's your story? I just stay in West Ham. My yeah. dad was West Ham. It's the family. I didn't, it, it, it just is. It's not, yeah. you know, did you pick a team? It, it's just Claret and Blue, you know, in my brother's room. And, 
Yeah, he's he's eight, nine years older than me. So it, it was just a thing. I didn't realise it wasn't part of everyone's family in a way, yeah. if that makes sense. You know, my dad even played for um, West Ham Boys as well back in the day. I've been trying to find the photos everywhere, but I couldn't find them. <laughs> I've only got, I got, only got one on my uh, thing here. But yeah, but from like the 40s, you know, so yeah. it, it's, it's in the family. It's in the blood, you know, and uh, yeah, it's part of me, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember your first game? The West Ham game. My memory is awful. <laughs> I, I seriously, I haven't. I could go and watch a match, yeah. and if anyone asked me to do any punditry on it, the very next second, I could probably tell you who scored, and that'll probably be it. Yeah. I just haven't got one of those brains, unfortunately. But I can remember I was really lucky enough to go to the nineteen eighty FA Cup. I mean, I yeah, it, my dad got a ticket. I don't know how, but he got a ticket. And I can remember more than the match itself, getting there, going there, yeah. getting in the car. You had one of those, you know, the cars where you have to pull up your aerial and then you're tying around the claret and blue little ribbon on the top yeah. of the aerial. The back of the car, I can remember sort of winding down the window to put the scarf off out and yeah. wrap it up again. We had a well dodged window as well at the back. So yeah. I was tying it around sort of like the armrest as well so it wouldn't go out as a little kid. And I could just remember just going down the A406. And everybody else sort of like, it just seemed like we was all in an army, all on a yeah. convoy, all going together. And I could just remember that feeling of of just, just yeah, it's like family. We're, we're all going going on a big party. And that that's yeah. how it felt, you know. And just, again, it's like we were saying earlier, like the senses and things like that, the feelings of everything, you know. With me, it's always driven by feelings, you know. Yeah. Listening to my dad sing, you know, my dad's a very quiet man, you know, kept himself to himself. But when bubbles come on and abide with me, and he would just, just sure. keep, keep singing. And I get quite emotional thinking about it because even yeah. when bubbles come on now, you know, my dad's long gone now. And, you, you know, I still, I still think of him. I get yeah. emotional now, Russ, you know, just thinking yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's senses, it's, it's, it's senses, though, isn't it? It's like, I'm the same. It's yeah. like, that was um, that was the song. <laughs> it's, it's it's a bit sick when you think about it. Now. That was the song that my granddad's creation. That was the song when the curtains closed. And thinking about it now, I'm like, really? That's just, that didn't really, it didn't really sort of fit the mood. Um but yeah, no, it's true. It is emotions. It is stuff like that. It's like I remember going to we went to Cardiff in two thousand and six um, for the FA Cup, and yeah, I remember sort of going along, and as you said, doing the whole tying the ribbon around the thing, and then as soon as you hit the M twenty five, it all broke, and so it's like <laughs> flapping, and like you'd always do that thing, wouldn't you? Where you tie you would you'd tie the scarf on the coat hook, and then you'd but then you'd put the window up. Yeah. And it was like, it was just, yeah. And it was like, when we got to the bridge, it was like a, a sea of claret and blue, you know, it was just like absolutely mental. And it is, it's, it is a family. And, and, and that's sort of part of what's happened with this sort of channel. It's just become its own sort of community. And, and you know, people have sort of suggested people to come on or, or someone's text me someone's number and you know, they'll have a good story about this one. And, and, and that's what I love. And that's, and I think, I'm not, and I don't think we're biased when I say it, but West Ham fans have the best are the best fans in the world. They really genuinely are. Um, you know, I have, as I said before, I had like um, the other day. I had one of the one of the um, videos. I can't remember which video it was. Um, a beautiful message from an Arsenal fan, basically saying, "Look, this has kept me going through lockdown. I I absolutely love the channel. It's like we don't have anything like this, at Arsenal. It's like I know it's all West Ham, but it's just lovely to hear stories of ex pros or fans." of all different ages and it was like do you know what that really meant something and obviously on facebook people message me like a lot of my old school friends are tottenham fans are like oh yeah, yeah. i still watch it and and it just it's lovely isn't it? it's just lovely you're just thinking you know when all you know everything that's that's going on in, in the world let alone yeah. at, at the club that um that you know that that sort of west ham community spirit is just still there mm. and 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 even more so i think because of lockdown you know you've had this sort of spirit of the blitz East yeah. End, and it's something totally. about, and it's something about supporting West Ham that has that. I don't Coming think together. exactly, yeah. and I think I don't think you'd have that if you were winning every game, mm. you know, and winning titles. It just becomes like blasé. You're going to beat, you're going to roll over this team four 0 You know, for us, totally. to, for us to beat an Arsenal, or whatever, it's like 
we know it's going to happen three times or four times a season. We know that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just when it's going to happen. And I think that's why we enjoy it. And, um, yeah, no, it's, and it, it's like, you know, typical, like, as you said on Saturday, you know, an amazing day, all you guys, you know, going back in and then, West Ham move nine one. You know, it's just like it's the West Ham. I told you not to mention. I told you not to mention the scoreline. Do you know what I've gone? Do you know what I've gone? I I start. I mean, I don't. I don't like the mask. I'll be honest. I, 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 you know, I wear my glasses, and it doesn't matter what anyone does. It steams up. So I've bought one of those visors now. So and that's quite good. So um, yeah. I quite like that. I've just bought it. Just came today, so and I've uh, and I, can, I went to B and Q and everything um, oh. without a problem. So there we go. So I'm going to take that on Saturday on next on the uh, we, 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 the next game uh, next next Tuesday. Won't it? Next Tuesday we have got the Carabao mm. Cup. Um, but but yeah, no, it's it is. And as you said, with your dad and and as with your brother, it's it's all about family, isn't it? And it, it just mm. is. It it's just really is. Sick. That's what it is. It's part of you. It's part yeah. of your family. I mean, when Dad died, we was looking back into the history, you know, of our mm. family. And it's all London, you know. It's, <laughs> so it probably goes back to day dot with West Ham as well, you yeah. know, since since the start. So, so yeah, it's, uh, it's an important part. It's part of life. And even though, you know, back in the day when I was a young gay girl and I started to look a little bit different and didn't sign a fit in with the family, yeah. And it was it was a bit tough back then, Russ, to be fair. Not yeah. tiring everyone with the same brush. It just was that time, you know? Yeah. And so I stopped going to the games. And and, and uh, it was Pride of Irons that kind of brought me back because I felt, felt safe and comfortable. And I got yeah. a bit older and a bit uglier and I don't care as much now. I just wanted to go back and support the team rather than watch it on a box, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but, and then um, and then, then lockdown happens. And you have to watch it in the box anyway. Oh, oh, I suppose, yeah. Yeah. Are you a crowd uh, noise on or off person? Definitely on. I tried it definitely off. On. It just just felt wrong, as if I was over the park watching the kids. You know, it yeah, just yeah, felt yeah, wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you need the atmosphere. I, even the delay, I didn't mind as much. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I like doing. I like jumping on all the watch alongs and fucking mm. up with with Charlie on Hammer's chat Didn't or whatever, or, and just and, and giving them like the giving them sort of the, the the info like a minute before they happen because obviously yeah. I've got them there. But uh, you know, so who's it's... pressing the button then to make all the noise? That's all right. Was that you, Russ? Was it? No, that is not. <laughs> that is not the per- no. I we interviewed a guy called Travis Newton um, a few weeks ago, and he works for Sky, and all that stuff on the crowd crowd noise is done by computer all yeah. done by ai absolutely amazing you know mm. all done by opta index and stats and da, 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 mm. and if this happens because i always thought it was a poor little sap in a poor little bloke you know with a soundboard um, yeah which which makes it even worse because obviously i always say when we beat, beat the um when we was three new up against norwich at half time and they got booed off by the by the robots <laughs> and i was like that's when you know the crowd's turned <laughs> When, when, when a C3PO and R2D2 starts start booing, booing poor, uh, you know, T- Timo Pukki off the pitch. I must admit that was a classic. I was laughing at that. I must admit it's just that. Like, it's like, that was but it's true. Yeah. It's true. It's like obviously on yeah. FIFA, like you're playing FIFA game and you lose half time, it boos you off. So, it's um, loved it. But that's the thing, yeah. and obviously, as you said, with things like Pride of Irons, it just brings brings every. It's, it, it just as you said, gives you a, sense, a, a a different sense of community, doesn't it? Because you've got, like, obviously the West Ham community and Pride of Irons is, is obviously a, a tighter network of people, but that, that brought you back into football. So, well, well, Not only that, just just made me realise that football's changed as well over yeah. the years, you know, and, yeah. and, and we have evolved, you know. Yeah. We're all in our own little bubbles, pardon the pun, anyway, you know. So it, it, it's a case of now, you know, like, I want to give a shout-out as well to, to one of ours, which is Jackie, Jackie Hughes, you know. Girl she's Jackie, had yeah. uh, a, a nightmare of a time, you know, yes, and she's yeah. one of the nicest women you could she ever, is. ever wish to meet. So, Jack, we're all thinking of you still, you know, stay yeah, strong, yeah. girl. You know, meet up for a pint hopefully soon, you, you know. So, and it is, it's going to the bar afterwards and meeting all these characters and meeting yeah. all the people. And we are, we're not separate. We're just there to help people realise that, you know what, it's okay. We are a family now. Just come yeah, back. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Buy your season ticket. Sit on the seat. We are family do what you love, which is yeah. watch, watch, watch the football. It's, yeah, it's exactly. as simple as that, and we're there, you know. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, that, I mean, yeah. Obviously, we said Jackie's had a horrible time, and but it, it exemplifies that West Ham community. You know, 
doing the stuff on the villa game for the grandson and stuff that that came about because yeah, yeah and it's again it yeah. just it, it warms it warms the cockles of your heart there there's yeah. good people out there and they're all good people everyone everyone we've had on the channel everyone we've spoken to all the messages it just is if there's a way to bottle, bottle that up because i think we need a lot of, lot of that at the moment so a lot yeah. of that good feeling um it, it's still there and it is still yeah. there which is which is great um Right, let's let's go and talk oh, about this yes. eleven. Let's go Not about that. <laughs> <laughs> the show, the show. Yeah, that's it's just it's chatting. Yeah. That, well, that's the idea. That's that's the whole point of this. It's just like two people in a pub. Um, so let's let's talk about the eleven. So as a, the, everyone we've had on bar three people, um, Mr. Redknapp, Mr. Bishop, and Mr. Rear Coker. The one, no one else, everyone else has picked an 11. Um, and, and the idea is you, you pick players. The only rule is that you have to be alive to have seen them play. Not necessarily see them play live, because that will obviously, I don't know, the poor guys in <coughs> the Indian Hammers, you know, in, in Bangalore, probably haven't seen many live games at West Ham. And if they did, it was probably a championship game and they had to put, you know, I don't know, Matty Taylor in at left back or whatever, bless yeah. him. Um, so it's, it's been alive to see play. Obviously, I couldn't pick Bobby Moore. I wasn't around to see him or Billy Bonds or Trevor Brookin. I was around to see Breen, Boyer and Butler, you know, something like that yeah. instead. Seems a fair yeah. swap. Um, and, and so that's what we do. So, and you can talk about whoever you want. It doesn't have to be the best players. It might be the favourite players, or the worst, but it doesn't matter. Joe, it's totally up to you. We'll start with in goal. Right. So who is in goal for the Bailey eleven? Well, again, it's such a tough one. When you asked me on this, I thought, oh, this is going to be really simple. But it's taken me days. I just couldn't choose. It's so difficult. So I had to go with the emotion. Uh, So I went with um, Parks. Had to be, you know, 1980 as well, FA Cup. Um, Gentle giant. You know, what a lovely fella. Never yeah. met him, but I've heard so many. Again, West Ham family, you have so many stories about him. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. Um, uh. He had, what, 340-odd appearances. Oh, Again, yeah. I said my memory's an, an absolute nightmare. And I, I can remember his stance. It was his stance on the ball. Yeah. You know, it everything, everything about him. And, you know, I, again, I remember going to the pub and was chatting to this woman about two, three, four times I was meeting her, having a good chat and a good laugh. And it turns out it was Marie, which was yeah. Marie Parks. You know, it's all <laughs> those kind of things. I was fangirl. I was getting really like, you know, and I, I, I don't get starstruck. And I was getting starstruck over Phil Parks' daughter. You know, it's... Yeah. Uh, it was amazing, you know. So yeah, it's all part of that family thing as well for me. You know, one of my dad's favourites as well. So yeah. I've, I've had to put Parksy in. Put Parks yeah. in, yeah, definitely. And obviously, he, he turned seventy, didn't he, during lockdown? Bless him. Yeah, how did so that was, happen? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> and when we had Marie on, she said like he grew, he grew his the mullet back just for the seventy, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And bless her, oh. she was trying really hard to get get all these like video messages and stuff down. Yeah. Bless her, she was running all over the place. But um, oh. yeah, a, a gentle oh. giant and uh, a lovely bloke. Right. Um, oh, are we, what what formation are we playing? Are we playing four four two. Well, I'm or... doing four two, but swapping it over a little bit because majority right. of these guys anyway they played in different positions. Anyway, sure. You will know? you go for the um, team as you want to, Joe? I will. I will. I will. Full. Right, thank you very much. Give it, giving me the leeway. Right, so I'm going. Um, I'm looking here because I've changed my mind again. <laughs> it's just a nightmare, isn't it? I, I've watched one of these before when people look down and think, "What are they doing?" Of course, they're just changing their minute like, minds yeah, last minute, like I am. Down, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I am going for definitely. It's got to be the Terminator. I've got to yeah. go for him. Yeah, yeah, I am going to go for him. Um, yeah, you know, he managed West Ham ladies as well. So there's the link there. He did, um, yeah. Just, just before he came over with Slaven um, into coaching. Um, and he was just a force. He was proper West Ham, played yeah. for the badge, old school. Loved the old hard man as well. You know, a uh, bit of a naughty boy, obviously, with the odd tackle here and there. But it's because he was passionate. He was focused. Yeah. And we love that about him. Definitely. We love that about him. You know, uh, yeah, so it's definitely Terminator. And... Yeah, and, and it's great that he's, he's, I think he's, you know, really proud of, happy of, you know, him and Slav obviously getting back into the Premier League. Yeah, you totally. know, it's, it didn't work out properly at that time. And, and you mm. know, it'd be great. Hope, and I, I hope that, you know, when they come back, that there'll be some fans there because they'll give them, they give them both a reception Always, that they deserve. Totally. And obviously, yeah. uh, 
was he became a dad as well, didn't he, during close season as well? And that is, again, because that's what you need. That's what you need, you know, when you're trying to spearhead your team to Premier League survival is <laughs> is to have a newborn baby <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, sleepless nights, bless him. But yeah, uh, yeah he's a, and I think he's one of those people who was, you know, he's uh, outside of West Ham, his reputation went before him, didn't it? So everyone thought he was a thug and stuff, but actually he was a phenomenal football player as well. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, some of the skill, um, obviously, you yeah, know, you you can have particularly over lockdown a lot of time to go back and look at old games and stuff and a lot of Robert Banks's yeah. stuff which is brilliant and some of the stuff that Julian did you know I remember I saw this one which someone mentioned and I went back and saw it where he literally it was against Man United I think it was the game where we sort of stopped them winning the title and Cantona was running behind him and he did, he used to always do that thing where he used to flick it back over their heads um, yeah. and he did it with Cantona and he just nodded like well done you know it's like well there you go there you yeah. go you know that's, that's right. the endorsement. I mean... People forget, you know, he could place the ball 50, 40, 50 yards ahead yeah, of you yeah, yeah. perfectly in time to, yeah, it was just, yeah, it was, it was sublime. I, yeah, I, I love the fella as a footballer. I love him. All right. Yeah. Julian's in. Who's next? Right. Okay. I am going for, um, yeah, I'm going to go for Rio. Um, yeah. One of our own boys as well. One of the kids, you know, um, Oh, I'm so sad that we 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 didn't keep him. I I I you know he, he just he did he used class didn't he ultimately? Um, I, one of the best centre backs I think we've ever had. Um, yeah. and certainly England as, as well. Just absolute mm. utter class. And it's he's one of those where you go like, oh, if only you know we could have kept hold mm. of him at least for another season or two. You know, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the thing. It happened to that whole generation, wasn't it? It was like a conveyor belt where everyone just left about a season or two too early, and it's like when we had eight. When we had, exactly we had, when we had eight on, we spoke about it, and he was adamant that if they'd kept them all, they'd have won the league. And I don't think you can blame. I don't think you can disagree with him. To be honest, I mean, when we had Tony Carr and he did his eleven, and it was mm-hmm. basically the England twenty ten World Cup squad, you know, because it was, and it was like a you know, something like eight of the world cup 21 had been through the west ham academy and it's like that's mental that is actually mental you know when you think about and that was the golden age that was the year that south africa one where we were like tipped to do really well yeah mental if only if only only. how many times have we said that if we had a pound for every time we said that that, but that is being a west ham fan isn't it it's like it's, it's living on what ifs you know, it's like, yeah. what if, what if in 85, 86, we'd won those first couple of games? What if there wasn't, and we had to, you know, it's like, it's always, you know, <laughs> what if Marlon Harewood hadn't done his leg in in 2006 and at the last minute he had his right foot rather than his only one foot and he just swang, you know, it's, uh, what it's if, yeah. you know, what if we beat Crystal Palace and, that, and, and Michael Carrick wouldn't have had to leave and yeah. then we'd have had him, you know, oh, I just love it. That's, that's what I love. It's just like, because it's like these sliding doors moments isn't it and yeah. this they happen all the time with West Ham right it's okay never boring being a West Ham fan it's sure. never yeah. you're very right <laughs> it's never boring it's always a, you know it's always a bit like a soap opera and that's why I love it <laughs> it is because you don't know it's twists and turns I mean that, yeah, that Redknapp yeah. era that Redknapp era epitomised yeah. West Ham's a soap opera you had you know pragmatists you had the the sort of the, the hardened professional you know, the Razor Ruddox and John Monkers. you had silky players you had youth you had these crazy foreigners to Turn up and Marco Boogers and Paolo yeah. Futre and it was yeah. just a, 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 it was my favourite time as a West Ham fan. It was just mental. Yeah. Right, okay. Rio is Sorry. in. Who is next? All right. Right. I am going for. He did play. I put him there because I, I yeah I want to fit other people in. And I know he's played there. It wasn't his best position, but uh, I put Billy Bonds there. Yeah. Right. Um, Six foot two, rise of blue. Yeah. Um, oh, do you know what? When you're talking, you said earlier about things you can remember. It was uh, when they opened the stand for him. Oh my god! Amazing, it? Jeez, Amazing. you know. And, and I'm block one four one. I'm only a few few rows from the front, so uh, you know. And and he's, he was walking round, and you know, I've got a load of the. I'm sit there on my own as well, by the way. I'm only the only one with the season ticket. There. And and you know, they're all like. Really, like you know, the old seventies lot. Let me say yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. you know, and you could feel the emotion. You could, you could see him welling up as well. You know, it mm. was such a special day. And the old Billy Bond, just, yeah. j- just amazing. Gave it his all, the old school. And uh, mm. you can't fault the man. Can't fault no. the man at all. 
No, ex- 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 exceptional person. You know, ex- yeah. a humble man, um, incredibly dedicated family man. You know, people. That's what I think. That's a great thing about his story because about his whole channel is because I wasn't around to see. I, yeah, I saw him manage, manage us, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, but never so. saw him as a player. And um, listening to some of the stories about, you know, where oh, I can't remember. It was a guy. Who was it? Well, I'm Matt Lorenzo, and I think it would be Matt Lorenzo. Oh. And he, he went with his dad quite a lot, because his dad was a commentator. And he, he would regularly see Billy, and he would literally come out of the dressing room with a can of, like, a four-pack that he'd nicked from the player's fridge, <laughs> straight in the car, go home. No interviews or anything, because he wanted to spend time with his family. Oh. And, you know, incredible man. Um, mm. You know, famously didn't didn't turn up to the last game at Upton Park, because he was stuck in traffic, and... It looked a bit tasty outside, and he feared for his for his kids, for his family. So he turned and went back. And I just don't blame the man. I think he's a, and it was it was it was um, well overdue, wasn't it, to get yeah, that stand yeah, bastard? But they did it right. And um, it was, true it was meaning, lovely. true meaning in the word legend. You say legend, you chuck Billy Bonds at that in every yeah. part, every aspect. Absolutely, totally. And I think the trouble is, I think nowadays because the because the way football is, they almost. It's no, no fault of themselves, but they're like mercenary. It's like it's a career rather than a passion. I think that's fair to say. You know, Man. you know they, you know they, you yeah. don't get, you don't get. I mean, no, the Mark Nobles of this world are the, are the are the sort of the exceptions to the rule. And so the word legend is banded around if someone plays more than three or four seasons at a club. <laughs> um, but back of that, I mean, but you know, Bonzo and, and and you know the Alvin Martins and and Rays and Tonkers and. They were legends, and because yeah. they, play, you know, and uh, Bonzo epitomised that. You know, obviously, I, I, you know, I don't think anyone will beat his his appearances. You know, I don't think Mark's Mark's not going to do another hundred and sixty no. odd. You know what I mean? So uh, bless him. But uh, Bonzo's in. Who's next? Right. Okay. So I'm going for me right back, and I am definitely going to go uh, with um, Thomas Retka. I Ooh. loved him. <laughs> to be fair, um, when we lost. Um, dicks it was like oh we've got we've got another one (laughs) it's like we've replaced him with that but on the other side and um you know what a fella again proper hard man loved the club we loved him i mean absolute you know hard as nails and i always felt every time he got the ball i was like okay i can feel relaxed now it's right they're running it's okay i feel fine now you know um yeah he was one of those you know safe safe yeah safe on the ball Definitely. Yeah, and and again, you know, you're talking about when Bonzo. I mean, it's diff- obviously different time frames, but obviously when he left that last game where he was bawling his eyes out as he left the pitch, and um, it's weird because you never s- assumed he had that affection for the club. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and it might have been that I don't. I don't think maybe he just didn't get have the West Ham fans always. If you put a shift in they're in your you're in their heart you know and he he did he was a bit crazy a bit mental so he's a proper like west ham you know <laughs> type of type of player and i think maybe it was might have been the only club that he's had that you know maybe back in his homeland but not you know in italy and stuff like that and and so maybe it's the first time that he had people chanting his name and stuff like that i don't yeah. know you know but yeah. uh yeah, he was, yeah our, he was... our club we, we definitely fit him you know was it first or second match when it was something he got sent off as well so i think he got sent uh, yeah. the first couple of games wasn't it or something yeah. like that yeah yeah really that's... endearing then west ham way thought that it's our boy yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and, as, as you said particularly with julian gone it's like you needed that sort of hard man in there i think right. you always need one we, that's one thing yeah. i think we lack in in our team is a bit of At naughty Mm, it's a bit yeah. of Although we are little, that. we are getting a bit more. I think since since Nolan's come into the team, uh, into the the, the the coaching team, we are a little bit mm. naughtier now. I've noticed, particularly at corners, oh, okay. uh, just because because <laughs> Nolan used to do that thing where he basically just stand in front of the goalkeeper. And just and now him. Antonio Antonio does that, and obviously he's bulkier and lower centre of gravity. He's smaller, and he's a bit nasty. It's nice. It's nice because we need that. We know people it's said not nasty. Push-over. He was going to say nasty. It's not nasty. It is nice to watch. It's good. It's for professional. Us, so it's professional. That's right. Professional. I professional. Love that, yeah. I'm liking you more and more. Nastiness. Nastiness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's go. Let's go into midfield then, Joe. We right, got a midfield. Okay. Go so then. I am going to go. Um, if I go down the left wing. All right, yeah, and cool. and again, it, I'm looking at it again. I'm looking at free here. Um, yeah, just purely for that kick, I'm going to go for Pyatt. Definitely, yeah. 
you know, um, I, again, I, I can't remember much, as I say, but there was that free kick, uh, Man United, uh, the sixth round or something it was. Yeah. And that free kick, when he, he hit that so sweet on the side of his boot and it went flying over. And I, I don't know, it, it, it's like he had x-ray vision, that guy. He, yeah. he could just see through walls. Things he saw, unbelievable. And, and, and again, the work rate, just magical absolutely well, i just magical. think i just think you know particularly free kicks i mean he was i mean it's not just for west ham but i think for the for premier league in general mm. he was doing stuff with free kicks that i've never seen anyone do i mean obviously ronaldo came and did that knuckleball didn't he when he hits yeah. the knuckleball and it and but this was this was this is different you know that crystal palace goal where it was like four yards going wide and then it just mm. cut in i just he was yeah. you know and and you know and obviously how he left and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, to be honest, ugh, I mean, you, you, I look, I look through that because you get, he's a mercurial player. And, and with those types of players, they're like, you know, it's like the whole Arsenal squad, you know, that's why you kick the Arsenal players a little bit because well, Arsenal men's, because you know, they're going to kick off and you know, they're going to throw their toys out the pram. And yeah. that's what Payet was going to be like. And he left, he joined us in the same way he left us. So yeah, we couldn't really yeah. expect that, but uh, he no. gave us like, he, I mean, he, it will always go down in in sort of in history just because of that season he gave us. Okay. It wouldn't have been that, that such a great season that last if he wasn't there. Um, not. When he was there, he played for us and he gave <coughs> us everything, and and that's all you can ask for, you know. And it was great to watch a bit of magic, you know. Yeah, one yeah. of the best players I've ever seen. For sure. Oh, for sure, the, technically yeah. the best player. You don't get many Ballon d'Or nominees playing for West Ham, <laughs> no, you know. You and he was like the man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's like he was the guy that when you yeah. ran the pub. Do you remember the pubs when we used to go to pubs? I remember that one. Um, <laughs> and I just from vaguely remember. Um, but he was the type of person who all your mates who weren't West Ham fans wanted in their team. You know, he was on every fan, every every one of your mates' fantasy yeah. football league team, and he was, and it was like it gave you a real sense of pride. Um, it, it was nice, much, wasn't it? Yeah, just yeah that it was one nice. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, Pyatt. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, okay, Pyatt's in. <laughs> Who's next? Right, okay. Um, I am going in for... I'm going to throw away that bit of paper just to make sure I got that one. Right, I'm going to go... It was a tough one. I was going to go for the right wing. I was going to go for Sinclair because I think, again, you know, oh, his work rate was outstanding. But yeah. I've got to go for Joe Cole. It's got, for me, it's got to be Joey Cole. Yeah, yeah, Joe Cole. Yeah. Joe Cole. Joe Cole. You know, <laughs> the thing is, I think what people... Are do, they underestimated his ability for reading the game as well you know yeah. that i think everyone thought you know it, it underestimated his intelligence as well i think people now he's more of a pundit i think people are starting people to see it now him. yeah 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 definitely and you know again skill you know he could turn like that he spotted things he he read this uh, you know i wouldn't i wouldn't like to play chess with him to be fair you know he, he read the game well in advance of everybody else and you know little fella got around and, and how nice as well just didn't you know what, what a lovely boy as yeah. well one of ours and and it must have been hard, tough you know for joe you know because since since he was probably about 12 13 we know we knew about him and yeah. and just like the the, the the sheer pressure on the kid and and yeah, I mean, it was it was you know it was nice that he bookend. I mean, I always said that he bookended his career at West Ham. And he did, you know, he sort of joined, He came into yeah. the world with West Ham and he retired at West Ham yeah. type thing. And and that's what people like to see. And um, yeah, I yeah. mean, his family are big West Ham fans, and it's nice when you have a West Ham boy play for your team. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. you know that they mean. I mean, I was watching the um, watching that Tottenham documentary on um, Amazon Prime, the All or Nothing. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, Harry Winks on there, who I've got this new respect for. It's about fact based for Tottenham. But um, and he said, you know, because he's a Tottenham fan, he's like, look, and I, you know, when I when we when when we win, it's a little bit more for me. When we lose, it hurts a little bit more for me compared to the rest yeah. of the team. And you get that feeling with someone like Joe and Martin and people like that. And um, it's nice to think of that, you know, you know Absolutely. that they're suffering as well. <laughs> you know, it's not just, not just yeah. they're suffering because they're fans, and it's uh, right. it's nice to see. Yeah. Right. Okay, so um, -dokey. speaking of Mark Noble, you know, -dokey. Mr. West Ham, I can't leave him out. I've not even yeah. got a look at that, to be fair. <laughs> you know, the, the mileage he puts out, he wears his off on his sleeve. He's just, yeah. you know, one of our boys, you know. Um, you just said then as well, you know, sort of like about being a fan as well, you know. So mm -hmm. it's like all the kids think, oh, we could be that, you know, that that, yeah. that could be me and, 
it's great. It's great to watch, you know. And one of the best things was uh, we beat Arsenal away. And again, I can't remember what year that was. Last year, it could have yeah. been last year to me, but it was probably about 15, 16, I think it was. Um, and then I think the commentator says something, you know, like, you know, you know, what did you feel about West Ham? He's like, yeah, you know, yeah, and I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. Beat, beating, you know, Arsenal. And it was just like, it's that kind of thing. And that was from the being a fan, that little chuckle yeah. like that. So it was being a fan. It wasn't about being a player at that as well. And, and again, it's so endearing. And everyone I know, I think, would put Mark Noble in their 11, to be fair. Yeah. Well, I think he's like, you know, for me, he's my Billy Bonds, isn't he, really? Because yeah, I was, you know, because he's, you know, I mean, it was 50. I think he started, I think his debut was like 15 or 16, something ridiculous like that. And, um, and yeah, you're right. I mean, obviously, you know, when I always, I always talk about, because you know it's different. It's different. You know, you always you know he's a fan. But then I I watched him watch a game when we played the Chelsea game at restart because he was sitting mm. where the where the disabled seats were because okay. it's already socially distanced. They're already two mm. meters apart, so that's where that's where the sort the squad that aren't playing sit. And he literally he watched it as a fan. You know, he was kicking every ball, and as soon as obviously Yama scored the third goal, he was punch in the air and and as soon as the whistle he jumps over the barrier to run into the tunnel and you just think oh he's just brilliant you know it's just like he, and 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 you know and, and every year he surprises you because every year you think oh it's his last year and then then Moyes puts him in his number 10 role last year and it's all just worked for him um and yeah. I just I think he's just great. I just think he's a lovely bloke and you know and, and even more so when we talk about Joe obviously, obviously Joe captained West Ham, you know, for the season we went down. But for Mark, you know, for have your your captain, your your talisman, but also mm. being an absolutely diehard fan, you know, it just it's something special. You know, you look in the other other teams and you don't you know, like, I don't even know who Arsenal's captain is, but it certainly isn't an Arsenal fan. And, you know, and it's just, it yeah. just gives that extra, well, you yeah. know, belonging. And, and, and I don't know what it is, but there's yeah. something warm about Mark Noble being captain. It definitely I is. And, and I think that's why it hurts more about Rice, because I think Rice could be the same. But we're in a different era now. We're in a different yeah. time as well. I think Mark Noble's the last of that, you know, and, and, and that's really sad for me, you know, that... We're not going to have a true legend anymore. That's what worries me about football now. To be fair. yeah, but but then again, I I, I don't know why, but I in the I mean, you know, my I'll, I'll post this video and it'll be it'll be sold tomorrow. But you know, <laughs> I've just got this feeling with Deck. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's being under the under the tutelage of Mark Noble. You know, he's Deck is an extremely clever person. He's mm. not thick at all. No. Um, you know, I mean, he's not he's not media trained in his interviews for sure. Um, and so you know, everything he means is genuine. You know, and I just think you see, he sees how the cat. You know, he's he's not. You know, he's a social media person. He's not silly. He sees the love for Mark Noble, and you know. He could be a massive fish in a very small pond at West Ham. If he's, you know, with the team be built around him, he would be even more Mr. West Ham than Mark Noble because it's 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 upper level, you know, yeah. because he's England international. You know, he is, you know, in his position, arguably the best, I think almost the best in the world, you know, in that totally. defensive midfoot. You don't get many of them to the pound. Um, no. You're and, spot on. I agree with you 100% there. I, and, and everyone I'm talking to says exactly the same thing yeah. as well. But it's still... It's just, oh, it's just, it's no, just football, it, isn't it? I, I don't like saying it as well because, as you say, you know, it, it goes the opposite way. I, mean, I, I just don't know. I, I don't know. I'd love, obviously love to see it. I can't see it myself, but I would just love no, that. No, I think my head, my head Parker, doesn't. Mark Noble, yeah. here we go. You know, yeah. passing the baton on. Yeah, my, my head sees it. My head sees the obvious, yeah. and my heart sees something different. And um, oh, it is what it is, isn't it? It's just football, yeah. as you said. But you know, yeah. but he's not one of those. I just think he's not one of those people who, you know, if 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 a team put in a really crappy bid and we said no, he's not going to down his tools. He knows his he knows his value, um, yeah. and so you know he'll he'll go when the offer's right. We mm. know he's going to go eventually. We you know in the in, in the, but it's when. Um, I, I don't think it'll, I, I don't think it'll be this season. I really don't. Cause I just think I, I just don't think I can't see where he'd fit. You know, if he's going to Chelsea, you know, Lampard wants to play him centre back, which I think is fucking ridiculous. Cause I just think yeah. I just think he's just wasted there. Um, the, the the team I'm really surprised about haven't 
haven't put any word, stuff in for him yet is is City, because they still haven't really replaced Fernandinho, and he is just the right person for that. But obviously, shh, Pep, shh, I haven't. T- yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh, Don't tell quiet. anyone. Yeah, sorry, sorry Pep. <laughs> But he obviously looks for like Rodri and places in like the league and stuff. But um, but yeah, no, and obviously they they've Chelsea got to sign Thiago Silva, haven't they? So he would be the centre back for this next season. So we'll see. I think we'll get at least one more season out of deck. But anyway, Noble's him. <laughs> right. Um, Who's next? <laughs> right. So what? Well, yeah, I'm getting confused now. Right. Okay. So I've gone for Mister West Ham, and um, it was going to be Parker, Scotty Parker. Obviously, mm. um, you know. Uh, Again, Mark Noble learnt so much from Parker as he well. Did. Yeah, you know, steady on the ball, always felt safe when he had it. You know, and that little spin around, beautiful. You know, yeah. lovely fellow as well. Um, don't blame him when he went no, to be there. Not at all. Uh, and I know a lot of people don't like it to went to the place that we don't uh, name, but y- no. you know. Um, but I am. Go- I've got a ball here, right? And I'm going to just like throw you a little bit of a curve ball, like right? Because Right, I don't know. But so what I'm going to go, we've got Mr. West Ham. I'm going to go for Mrs. West Ham. Ooh. I'm going to go for Katie Longhurst. So, oh, yeah, Kate she, Longhurst. You know, I've got the shirt on, I'm part of the women's supporters board. So, you know, um, what? Yeah, I, I can't Good not shout. leave her out. Yeah, is no, that the I first like woman that. you've had, Russ? Is it? That's that's the first. It's not. I mean, yeah, well, that's the first woman who's appeared in the eleven. Uh, we've we've had, we've had Kate on the on the channel. We've had Kate on the channel quite that. early on, bless her. And um, but yeah, she didn't even she didn't even pick herself. But do you know that's a great shout. Yeah. I like that. You know, um, I love her. She's good, good girl. Same, yeah. You know, I mean, she didn't get a cap either, as well. She had, she had the youth caps. Yeah, you know, she yeah. won the WSL with uh, Liverpool did. a couple of times as well. Yeah. You know, and she's so steady as well here. You know, she gives a calming effect to everyone. Loves the fans. Come, uh, comes over all the time. Interacts with us. You know, when she's got the ball, you know, she's steady. She fights for everything. If we're 10-0 up, she'll still be fighting for every single ball. She loves the club. We love her. Get in Kate Longhurst. Yeah. Yeah, that's so no, a good shout. No, I like that. I like that. No, yeah. Okay. Top top girl. She was, a, she was really good fun when we had we interviewed her. She was really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny because I said to her, I was like, oh, reading, reading through like her... You know, how many early games she's played for West Ham, how many goals. And she went, is, is it that? That's not a lot, is it? <laughs> I'm like, well, you are, don't, don't, don't you keep count? She was like, no, yeah. I don't really. Because I imagine some, cause some people, like, you know, uh, Tony Cotty, whatever, he's like proper statty. You've got to get it, you know. Yeah. Um, where she's, no, I don't. I, don't. I just pass it on to people. And I was like, well, maybe maybe you should take a few more shots, Kate. And you know, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She, no, it's she's great. not selfish, you see. No, she does she what's best no, for the no, team. No. She's such a, you know, that is a team player. If you look at yeah. any bit, she is one that epitomizes a team, team player, without question. You know, she's a leader as well. I mean, our Jill is marvellous, obviously. But, you know, being a West Ham girl as well, yeah, you know, now yeah. playing at West Ham. Love it. Brilliant. Love it. All right, Kate's in. Love it. All right. She Let's is. carry on. Like right, okay. That. So um, up front, I've got yes. um, ugh, has to be a Flair, the Italian Paolo Di Canio. You know, yep. oh, he's a god in my eyes. I I, I love him. I, yeah, I think he'd be my man crush. Is that the right word? If I had one, yeah. So uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course you're a man crush. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, that that would have been that would have been mine. You know, uh, yeah. so much Flair on the ball, just outstanding. You know, gave. Is everything is pa- the passion that he mm. had, oh, Russ? I yeah, it just brings so much joy just thinking about him. Makes kind of smile, bit red as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's the man crush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's going pink like me. Yeah, sure. Is, is, yeah, is but... that uh? Is that what what what, what, did, what advert do you do? Was it like? It was like uh, imperial leather or something like that, wasn't it? <laughs> that it was another was. one, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I love the guy. He's got a tattoo as well in the I believe. Yeah. Uh, that's what I mean. Man. Yeah, and and you know anyone who I mean, I'm I'm oh, I'm so f- I hate. I hate needles. Um, <laughs> I, I passed out my BCG test, um, and so uh, yeah, I knocked out the poor, uh, the poor, poor school nurse. You know, did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I had to Love have it. That. I had to have my actual one night, and the BCG test is just nothing. It's like a pinprick, isn't it? Um, mm. 
Oh God, yeah, stories of me and my, you know, there was once when my, my mother-in-law used to. Anyway, we digressed. But my mother-in-law yep. used to used to be a practice manager at, at Chadwell Heath um, Health Centre, and uh, I was we were setting up. You know, I was going to move to that sort of surgery, and we had to have a blood test and stuff. And my wife was pregnant at the time, and and I was outside like, bl- like taking blood, and I was like, like, and so I'm outside like doubled over. My wife's like ill anyway because she's like morning sickness yeah. and it's like we look like a right pair of charlies but yeah honestly <laughs> i oh, i can't stand needles but so anyway when it comes okay. to tattooing i'm like so much respect for people who have tattoos because yeah. and prepared to be inked by it for a west hand tattoo i just think it's mental but uh, uh no beautiful, yeah beautiful thing. And, and there's so many funny stories about him you know you talk to people and they just they have their own personal stories of paolo and and and, and it's lovely to hear that you know just because he's just He's like, I don't know, I just, you smile when you think of him just because yeah. he was just a one man show, really, wasn't he? Yeah. And we kind of got him by default anyway, didn't we? For, yeah, for exactly. pushing them off, you know. So the the whole story's there. It is like a, a, it is like a soap, isn't it? With, with yeah. him, especially, to be fair, you know. But uh, yeah, absolutely adore the man. Absolutely adore the man. Yeah. yeah. So. Right, Paolo's in. Who's right. the last piece of the Bailey pie? Because I feel for him as well. Um, Dean, Dino, Dino, I've gone for Dino. Yeah. Um, 26 to retire, you know, he, he gave so Awful, much as man. well. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah, you know, he had so, I mean, so much more to give. Uh, you felt oh, yeah. like he was just kind of starting, really, to be fair, Definitely. you know. Um, that the, the, the bicycle kick, you know, again, you remember, I can't remember, remember like, play, but yeah, that yeah, bicycle yeah. kick, I can remember it clear yes. as day, absolutely clear as day, no question. You know, I, I can remember unbelievable and 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 rio as well getting one over on rio so it was just yeah. it was just sublime and and you know um he, he, that the tap ins you knew if anything were going in the box and he was there he was just going to tap it in he'd get everything he was another yeah. one you could have put him on the chair span him round blindfold him and, and he'd find the goal do you know yeah. um yeah get absolutely gutted when uh had to retire early. What what a shame that was. He was. I mean, he yeah, he was. I mean, he was in he was in my eleven as well. He was like he was in my day. He was the complete striker. Do you know what I mean? He could do it all. You know, as you said, the tap ins, yes. Bicycle kicks, yes. Headers, hold it up. He had enough pace to get past the defender. Um, it was a shame, not just for West Ham but for England, because I think he would have formed a, a formidable partnership with Rooney when you know because it was that time when he was like Rooney had like Heskey and it just didn't really work and um, he, he was slotted he, in perfectly, wasn't he? He really Absolutely. would have, and it's, it's just and it's just typical West Ham that he gets <laughs> KO'd by the smallest player ever to play yeah, for England. Yeah, right. Like, I know. My goodness me. Yeah, I know. And it, and it is. It's such a shame, and I I, I still feel awful. For him now, to be fair, yeah, it's, it's the end of story. And, well, ending your on... career like that, it's, yeah, that's, it's that's, so early. It's like it's always tough. that. It's always that when you have players who do that. Like obviously Jack, he finished at 20, 28, 29, something like that as well. 29, you know, yeah. and it was like it's horrible because you just think they've got so much more to give. And uh, <clears throat> particularly Dino, he would have, yeah, he would have. He he may not have been at West Ham for many more seasons because he was that good. I think. Um, yeah, one or two seasons, I reckon the same. I, I I feel the same like all of them, to be fair. You know, anyone goes up that step, you know, we're going to kind of lose them, which is sad. But, it's yeah. funny, isn't it? It's funny when you, when a good player comes on. I remember like, you know, like Glenn Johnson, he like turned up and everyone went, oh, he'll be gone in 12 games. He was like gone yeah. in 12 games. You know, it's like, it's so true. It's the first question is, how long is he going to last? So like, you know, yeah. like when Ngakia turned up and it was like, he's quite good. Oh, okay. Well, then obviously that all went down and then it's like, yeah. okay, well, next one, he's quite good. When's that? Yeah. Um, it's, it's uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's the position we are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and to be honest, you know, but, but until, I mean, that that's that Glenn Johnson Rio era we spoke about. You know, I mean, if you mm-hmm. Tony, Tony Carr, he said, you know, you got, well, you got memories. Before that, we had like one or two maybe yeah. came through. And then afterwards, we probably had like one or two came through. And that sort of period was just like this sort of golden age for the academy. And um, yeah, it was like, where did I keep coming from? It was just it the was, constant. Yeah. It was it was exciting and then, times. And then and then we didn't have much after that for a while. And then we had like a sort of a mini one. So we had like you know we've interviewed like Zavon, and you had like Zavon, you had Junior Stanislas, you had Carl Reed, who were mm. all just neither could neither three of them could just get there. Do you know what I mean? It's like that, it was yeah a little almost. bit longer. Yeah, yeah, almost. So close. So close. Mm. Anyway, what a shame. Mm. Anyway, 
<laughs> we t- James, be lovely. I brought you down there, haven't I, Russ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. 53 yeah. minutes, as, as 54 minutes has flown by. Sorry, um, I thought it was about to go through you. No, it's great. It's lovely. No, I love it. Joe, it's been lovely chatting to you. I'm really glad we finally got it got it, got it, it sorted because I think it was a really, really nice interview. And it's lovely that um, to throw Kate in as well. It's a great shout because I think it's, um, yeah, we do talk about the men's all the time. And actually, someone like Kate is, you know, living the dream for it. You know, she's playing for a. A, a, a club that she supported all her life and i think that's mm-hmm. actually mental and mm-hmm. i think it's brilliant but um thank you so much for your time joe it's been lovely cheers russ enjoyed it thank it's been a, been a laugh russ thanks yes, and we'll go good. for a drink soon i come up to the posh part of hong church and we we'll go for a drink when we're allowed if they, if they let you in if they yeah. you're in, if they go you've got, you got to get past shirt. the wi- you got to get past the width restriction no i'm not saying yeah. that but in the car you know <laughs> it's not, you it's not, i'm not saying that you know when you say so I, I didn't mean that at all i didn't mean that at all okay. anyway um um, anyway, um, thank you, Jack, so much. And obviously, thanks to everyone else for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, whether you're YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Um, even try Alexa. Try that and say play Hammers 11 and see if it works. It should work. But anyway, um, until next time, from, from me and Joe, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Come on, you wines. And we'll see you again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. See you <laughs> later. Way.